Best league in the world, Fantasy Update, with League Commissioner Elliot Schultz. Welcome to the Best League in the World, Fantasy Update, Week 5 Edition. You all ready to fuck? Mike, what's the latest on the big game? I think someone's winning. Back to you. In our previous week of the Best League in the World, there are plenty of matchups full of intrigue, excitement, and harsh disappointment. One such matchup was the Akron Sox Nashers versus the... Piscataway Platypie. I needed a miracle from Big Ben. Guess what I got? Big Ben put up f basically 44 points, 43.9 to be exact, to stave off the Platypie for an exciting victory to put me at three and one. Another really exciting matchup was the Ningbo Road Warriors, well I shouldn't say excitement, but the Ningbo Road Warriors versus Twin City Mall Cops. The Mall Cops, <sighs> only managed 49.3 points. Mainly because just, well, if you score 49 points, no one's showing up for you that week. Oh my God. What happened here? The news. And for the news of this week, a Facebook group has been created for our league in which everyone has been invited to. In this Facebook group, the power rankings are posted there as well as in our league main page. Evan will also be posting a slight thread where you are able to post one question for the Duck Commish. And in the group itself, anyone can post smack talk, banter, you know, just call people out, honestly. In other news, this is going to be a bi week reminder. Bi weeks are coming and they're coming fast. Remember to fill in your bye week players with those people you drafted late rounds. I know a lot of people don't really care about those late round draft picks, but those are also the people who nev never won a championship in our league. Put in your bye week players, or rather you take out your bye week players, and that's all I want from you. The Power Rankings Blitz. Welcome to the week five Power Rankings Blitz. Your team is most likely worse than mine. 12. Number 12, the Milwaukee Minions. Week in and week out, I'm gonna mention this. Mike, take care of your team. You have people injured left and right. And your biggest downside currently is your number two overall pick, Odell Beckham, has yet to score a touchdown this week. And honestly, he seems to be having character problems this year. He still will most likely turn out to be a great pick, but you gotta improve something, man. 11. Number 11, the Twin City Mall Cops. Brad, unfortunately for you, Cam Newton just doesn't know how to slide or for some reason just likes to get hit in the head. And another bad thing for your team so far is DeAndre Hopkins has yet to really prove himself this year, especially considering you took him fifth overall, I believe. And for your fifth overall pick, that is not producing, especially his .4 points last year, or last week. Hopefully this turns around, because I still think your team could do something. 10. Number 10, the Piscataway Platypi. This team's gonna get a huge boost this week in Tom Brady's return, which helps Filkins specifically because Andy Dalton has been a very below average quarterback in fantasy numbers this, so far this year. He has solid receivers and good running backs. So I honestly think this team is gonna be in the up and up. I might have said that in previous weeks, or am I not at? I believe I did, but I hope he's on the up and up because I like this team. Nine. Number nine, the Brooklyn Desperados. Ethan, your team is gonna hit something hard this week. And if you pull out a victory, kudos, man, because almost your entire team is on bye this week. You get Jordy Nelson back from his bye last week, but that can only do so much. You still own three quarterbacks and you have an open bench slot. Fix some of these things, you might make the playoffs. Eight. Number eight, the Red Hot Cold Peppers. Ben, your team 
is going to be fine. I mentioned it maybe in my first episode, I'm not sure. But you got the Triple J's in your receiving core. One of them, Julian Edelman, has Tom Brady coming back. John Brown's starting to produce. And the other, Julio Jones, just put up ridiculous numbers. That's a freaking solid receiving core. Seven. Number seven, the Ningbo Road Warriors, one of our two teams that are two and two. This is a team that has a quarterback who's underperforming in Andrew Luck, mainly because he just throws picks and doesn't have an offensive line. His receivers are underperforming, but luckily for you, Dad, Le'Veon Bell's back, as I mentioned last week. And as well, Aaron Foster's off his injury, Eddie Lacy's back from his body, and I feel like he's gonna be relied on more this year, and he doesn't like, seem slumping like he was in previous years. So that should be a good positive. Maybe you're a playoff team this year. Six. Number six, the Wildwood Willies, our biggest improvement team in the power rankings this week. They have two solid running backs in LaShawn McCoy and DeMarco Murray who are top five running backs. The receiving core is old as hell, which I mentioned previous week. So I still think that might not carry all the way throughout the season. But who, know, who do, what, what do I know? Jameis Winston is, is a flip of a coin every week, which is a, I've mentioned before. But I feel like those two running backs are enough to put this team in the playoffs. Five. Number five, the Philadelphia DJ. Jawan, once again, well, I said last week you're gonna lose most likely this week and start a losing stretch because bye weeks are coming. And I stay to my word to that because you have no bench Lucky enough for you, you have two good quarterbacks in Matt Ryan and Aaron Rodgers. But Aaron Rodgers already is by, so you can kind of just interchange them left and right. But that doesn't really matter. Your other positions is the big question mark. Who are you going to plug in when? Man, take care of your team. Four. Number four, the Arizona Devils. I still don't trust this team. None of the receivers have really put up numbers yet. They're all young and kind of just inconsistent. The one saving grace of this team is the Vikings defense, who is putting up ridiculous numbers for a fantasy defense, and Melvin Gordon, who has bounced back majorly since his rookie year. And he looks like the Wisconsin running back that he once was in producing touchdowns week in and week out. You still play two tight ends a week, which I say, you know, ugh, I don't know how long that's gonna work for. Three. Number three, the Wagga Wagga Warriors. Yes, a two and two team is ranked number three. It's because this team is just, it's deep. They have running backs so that he can interchange week in and week out. But unfortunately for him this week, Evan, is Drew Brees has his bye, Christian Michael has his bye, and you have a tough matchup, divisional matchup this week against Ningbo. If you win this week without Drew Brees and without Christian Michael, you'll probably sit at number three if the people above you continue to win. Two. Number two, the Tuckahoe Tadpoles. This is a team, yes, Andrew, this is a team that is filled with stacked receivers. You have five receivers in the top 20? That's ridiculous. You have two running backs who are pretty solid. Jordan Howard's gonna be really good for the next couple weeks. And Jamal Charles is coming back from his torn ACL and he gets an extra bye week to heal that up a little more and prepare for his next matchup. This is a team that will probably be number one in the near future. And you know what I'm, I'm gonna say, put it on the board for that one right there that Tucko Tabble is gonna be number one within five weeks, or maybe sooner probably. One. Number one, the Akron Sox Snatchers. Yes, I'm number one again. Uh, that's due to the fact where I have a deep bench where I can plug in players week in and week out and produce. My team has never really dropped below 70, or no, not even 70, I've never touched that. I think I'm, I've never dropped below 80 or 85 yet, which is proof of a consistent team, which is always the team that wins the championships. So hopefully I do well. One question with the commish. And our next segment, one question for the commish. Let's see this question. This week's question is from Jim Schultz. All right, father, it's from you. Which of the bottom four teams is most likely to make the playoffs? 
the Twin City Mall Cops, the Milwaukee Minions, the Brooklyn Desperados, or the Red Hot Cold Peppers? I'm gonna have to go with the Red Hot Cold Peppers because, as I mentioned earlier in my power rankings, Triple J, their three receivers are all solid. He's got a good quarterback, or pretty solid quarterback too. He's got really good running backs in Ezekiel Elliott and Matt Forte. Matt Forte might hit a really rough, rough spot right here apparently because he might be hurt and Bilal Powell is looking like he might take more carries because he's a younger man. But I'm staying with my statement. Red Hot Cold Peppers are the most likely of these four to make the playoffs. Fantasy Picks with Andrew. Welcome to Fantasy Picks with Andrew. Our co-host, Andrew Mills. Yes. There we go. All right. Our first matchup of the week. Are you prepared? Are you prepared for these? Oh, I've been prepared. Goddamn right, you should be. <laughs> All right. Our first matchup of the week is uh, the Twin City Mall Cops versus the Akron Sox Snatchers. Who do you got? I hate to say it, but I'm gonna have to go with you again this week. I am. A, I am as well picking the Akron Sox Snatchers myself. It's a close matchup, but just, whew, I, I gotta pick myself. The next matchup is the Wildwood Willies versus the Milwaukee Minions. Who do you got? I got the Willies. I got Spencer this week. Beat me last week when I picked Ethan, but I'm gonna have to go on his side this week. I'm going the opposite of you this time. I'm going the Milwaukee Minions this week. Our next matchup involves you. The Tuckahoe Tadpoles versus the Brooklyn Desperados. Who do you got? Well, considering Ethan's <laughs> basically his entire team is on a bye week, I'm gonna have to go with my team again. I'm gonna agree with you for the same point. Ethan's entire team is basically on bye. I'm going the Tuckahoe Tadpoles. Our next matchup, Philadelphia DJ versus the Red Hot Cold Peppers. Who do you have? I do like the Red Hot Cold Peppers team, but with Aaron Rodgers coming back, I think I'm going to have to go with uh, Philadelphia DJ. Let's go oh, on. Okay. We're different again. I choose the Red Hot Cold Peppers in this week. Uh, I don't know. I just I like Triple J. <laughs> <laughs> um, our next matchup: Arizona versus or Arizona Devils versus the Piscataway Platypie. What do you got? For my upset of the week, I have the Piscataway Platypi coming in and doing the upset. But if you're the upset, Mr. Philkins, you gotta play Tom Brady. You heard they it here. Win. You heard it here, Philkins. If you're watching this, if you want an upset, pick Brady and put him in. All right. I actually have the same upset pick for my week. I pick Philkins the. Scattaway Platypie over the Arizona Devils as my upset pick. And I'm going to say the same thing as Eric, or Andrew just said. Play Tom Brady. We need this upset pick. We needed the upset pick. All right. And for our matchup of the week, we have the Ningbo Road Warriors versus the Wagga Wagga Warriors. Who do you have and why? Well, last week I did go with Ningbo and he came through well with the return of Le'Veon Bell. But I'm gonna flip it this week and go with Wagga Wagga with the return of Gronk. Just like last week there yeah. was the return of Le'Veon Bell. I'm gonna go with the return of Gronk in, well, not necessarily the return of Gronk, but the return of Tom Brady. Hello, are you there? Are you? Okay, well, we'll get started here. I'm not. Hi, shop. What a twist on it. I feel like he's going to come back pretty big this week and uh, not disappoint me. Definitely. Definitely. I'm actually going to go opposite of you. I'm going to pick the Ningbo Road Warriors. And this week is full opposites, in it, isn't it? Um, I'm going to go the Ningbo Road Warriors. And I just, I love Le'Veon Bell so much because he's just an 18 to 24 point guy, which can carry a team, really. If the rest of your team just puts up between, I don't know, between 7 and 12 points, you're gonna put up a 95 point week. That's That seems reasonable enough to possibly win. And uh, considering Evan has bye weeks and Drew Brees and Christian Michael, that could be a very big win for my father, Ningbo Road Warriors, over a divisional opponent in the Wagga Wagga Warriors. 
Should I say book it? This week we are introducing a new segment starring a pale f old family friend who has starred as cult classic characters such as Snow Jensen, Mr. Winter, and the lovely, lovely Frosting Beard. <laughs> It's just great. And that's all I got to say. Let's get real with Bradley Delco. We, oh, we're going? Okay. Let's go ahead and get started on Let's Get Real with Bradley Delpho, because I'm saying it. Okay, top of the docket. First one, Cam Newton doesn't know how to finish a play and and run into the end zone because he starts walking. He takes a hit to the noodle, and he's out of the game. All right? He's got a concussion, maybe eight. I don't know how to count concussions, what the metric is on that. So, you know, we'll say he has eight. He's out of the game. He's listed as questionable for next week. That's not helping an owner. That's putting team second. All right, moving on. Well, Garrett Blunt, he got five points. That's decent, okay? But he didn't score a G-dang touchdown. And that's where the money's at, people. That's bad business when he don't score a touchdown, all right? DeAndre Hopkins, usually performer, not really this week. And when I say not really, not at all, all right? Four yards. That's this, but you take that away. That's how many. One, two, three, four. All right, that's point four points. Get him the ball, please. Okay, moving on. Golden Tate, don't even get me started, but you did. So here we go. All right, if I see little Timmy puts that jersey on his Christmas list, you know what he's getting for Christmas. He's getting nothing because I'm sneaking into his house and I'm stealing it all. All right, and I'm leaving two piping hot loaves where his presents were ho 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 timmy okay we'll keep on moving keep on moving cole beasley where the tutties at bro where's the tut where the tut at? all right we'll just leave it at that dolphins defense probably shouldn't have played them that was dumb on my part a little drunk when i made that decision yeah you, know, you boys know how it is all right so thought they'd score a little bit more than negative one points but I guess Flipper didn't come to play this game. All right. That's it. That's all I got. The wrap. And to close out our show, I'm going to have to throw a mention out for a weird stat. Five teams in our league are currently three and one. Another five teams are currently one and three and another two are two and two. This is a really balanced league, and this is what I was looking for in our league. League is a common word here, apparently. Oh, well. And another quick comment to end the show on is, uh, Juwan, take care of yourself. I understand a hurricane is coming in, and you live in Miami or just north of Miami? Evan? Somewhere over there. Yeah, well, he lives somewhere near in Florida, I guess. <laughs> and there's a hurricane coming, so Juwan, take care of yourself. I wish you well. And if everything floods, hell, man, good luck. It turns into, like, freaking Mad Max out there, baby. No, actually, well, I guess it turned into Waterworld. Everyone's seen Waterworld, right? All right, Evan, that's the end of our show. You got the ESPN zoom out? This has been the best thing in the world, fantasy update. Did you get that ESPN zoom out? You last week, you did get it right. Did you get it right yet? finally throw him at the wall. See if Tawan survives a hurricane next week. You're not, you're not, you're not lying to me, right?